full-on Metastar genius. Um, but what's been cool to see is the community around Angel Baby rally together and represent an artist in a way you've never seen before. So I don't know how familiar people are with scenes and sounds in Fluff World, but basically Angel Baby selling out their scenes and sounds you now have people who own an Angel Baby scene, own an Angel Baby sound, and are changing those scenes and sounds behind their fluff PFP to represent Angel Baby. So I always talk about it's like, if you saw the first Billie Eilish concert and maybe you bought a t-shirt, and now Billie Eilish, three years later, is Billie Eilish, your t-shirt maybe is worth a little bit more, but like not so much more. If you're a huge Angel Baby fan, and you have the early Angel Baby scene and sound, and a year from now, Angel Baby is the biggest artist in the world, which they probably will be at some point very soon, <laughs> you are making money as Angel Baby is making money. You are making choices and being a part of the artist's career as they are growing. And we're gonna continue to see this in all aspects of art and opening up new opportunities for artists because you didn't have you didn't have that opportunity before. And that's not even talking about all the like walls that were up in terms of access for artists and how hard it was to build an audience and the companies that you had to be a part of and the inefficiencies. This just like breaks down all those barriers. And now you can be a 10 year old, maybe there's some 10 year olds here watching this panel and say, if you're a music person, like, oh, maybe I don't have to sign to a major record label. I can like put out my music NFT. Hey mom, can I like, and put this song out that I wrote today as an NFT tomorrow. And now you're a 10 year old with NFTs carving out a path for yourself in the future that's never existed before. Um, for me, understanding IP and how it works uh, from a film perspective especially, there's a, um, we went into a meeting, uh, I had written out a TV show years ago and uh, uh, we had filled out a full pitch story story bible and, and created our entire IP and started going into meetings and we learned how how close you have to keep that because uh, it's it's one of those things that people take or, or can steal from you and, and IP is, is property. It's, it's something that's very dear to you. So when a company in a Web3 company is coming out and giving out that IP and sharing that, it's really kind of breaking that whole mold of how, how companies used to traditionally operate like that. And to be able to see that I mean, I, I've seen Fluff as you, you are given like a, a fully built high-end sort of Pixar character for lack of a better comparison. Um, but the range of what you can do with that, the creative range, um, it is a lot of work out of the way and a lot of that argument about who can do this and how can you position this and say this. And it just lets people create, which is what creators really want. And, and to be able to give people a new palette or a new blank canvas for them to create off of, I think that the whole idea of decentralizing the IP is, is giving that new medium in itself. It's a new freedom. I love it. Yeah. So there's so many incredible projects um, happening right now. Um, I'm curious, you guys are deep in the space. What is a project that just completely inspired you that sort of broke the walls of what you thought was possible that you're taking innovation from right now? I, yeah, I can start. Yeah. We're, we're all going to say Altered State Machine. Yep, yep. I was just <laughs> going to say it too. Let's just dance that now. And if you guys haven't, if you're watching this, those of you live, um, the other dome, the dome that we'll be going to next is the ASM dome. And it's like, it's, it's the big brain dome. Um, inside, you'll find the innovation um, that is like, it's totally mind-blowing and world-leading, what David McDonald and Carmen and the whole team there is doing is incredible. Non-fungible intelligence, um, if NFTs were the kind of the word of the last 12 months, NFI is probably the term that will take off in the next six months as they work to democratize um, AI, and they'll do a much better job than me. I don't know, does anyone want to try to get into it? We just go watch their panels. <laughs> oh, not panels, their discussions. I just, I just remember David calling me like back in November or October and being like, so future Metastars will be able to have them existing as like full on Metastar superstar artists. And then we can put these brains inside of their heads and take these NFT brains and put them inside of an NFT artist and they will be functioning as an AI. 
Wow. And that train was, driver freaked out on that. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's freaking out about I that. I remember I was walking, I literally just happening. stopped and I was like, is that real? He was, I mean, they said it's real, we're gonna find out. And then you go and look and you're like, whoa, this is real. This yeah. is really happening. It's, so. uh, we released, a, this is another shameless plug, we released another project last night called, uh, this week called Drug Receipts. And it's got a whole bunch of non-fluff ecosystem people in it. And I've been trying to explain the brains to them, which is why I'm not gonna try to take it on here because <laughs> it just, it takes a bit of a while to go, oh no, your, your NFT will exist in its metaverse environment and be doing productive things in and around you, um, or like while you're not there. It, it, you know, even onboarding new people into this space, uh, NFTs uh, with uh, an artistic element are, are kind of harder to convince people, like why does this picture of to something but with uh, altered state machine it's uh, it's opening people up to the idea that art is code that art is utility and, and that you can combine and and really enhance art with these things so that I think altered state machine I'm we're just going to shill it all day, aren't we? Um, <laughs> it's, it's a huge step forward and, and getting people to understand that, uh, like the potential and the abilities that are up. There. Yeah. Altered State Machine infomercial owner. <laughs> <laughs> but it is amazing. I love that to you. Obviously, on board. I love the shill. I'm all about it, especially the capabilities that are being unlocked. It's yeah. incredible. Um, I'm curious your take. So my favorite project were one, um, Justin Aversano that you saw in the trailer, like blows my mind because he went from having that massive success of Twin Flames to he created Quantum, this like collective for photographers. He's part of like a DAO that supports like photographers. So I'm like, what he's doing? what now like like how is he a creative but then he's able to just continue to innovate as the the community innovates and then also i've been really impressed by artists like um diana sinclair thank you x and, and and greg mike and all of those kind of jen stark for example just artists that had you know just traditional means you know traditional success in the art world but they crossed over into nfts and I wondered, like, as, you know, someone working on the film, it's just like, is this sort of a fad or, you know, that they're just exper experimenting with this NFT thing? And then now I'm blown away, like, a year later, like, documenting them because it's like, whoa, this is, in addition to their traditional art world, this is a real, legit community in the NFT space for them that's here to stay. Their collectors are here to stay. And similar to Justin, they just keep, like, innovating. And then... um I really love, again, Altered State Machine and Fluff World, and the um, end of this month when the Astro token comes out, I feel like it changes, it'll change the game in a bigger way than even Axie Infinity did in terms of play to earn. And I think it just not only changes the game in the NFT ecosystem, but then also just the whole, it's gonna get the attention of the whole gaming ecosystem that have been watching this space, but then, you know, they're gonna be like, whoa, this, everything has changed now, <laughs> you know? Um, and then lastly, um, I love the Artifact team. And then early on, like I've been documenting them for like a year, like I said, they're like, our goal is to make all of our collectors millionaires. And I was just kind of like, oh wow, that's an am ambitious thing to say. But then now, like if you were an early person, like for example, if you had a, a CryptoPunk, like last summer, you were able to mint for one ether, the, the sneakers. And then if you had the, uh, the NFT with that, you were able to mint so many more things and get airdrops, so many cool things that for a lot of people that has been a million dollars if you held on. So that's just completely blown my mind to watch it. And just, it's not even, um, you know, just the monetary thing. It's just seeing how passionate these communities are. And if I wasn't making a film right now, I would be inspired to go experiment with Blender and experiment with all these um, like creative and Web3 tools because there's just so much opportunity and like this is where it's at. Incredible. We've talked a lot about the future um, and what is possible. I want to spend a little bit of time just in terms of the current challenges. 
Um, I'm curious, you know, what you guys see as the challenges that creators, artists, producers are facing right now um, creating in Web3. And for anyone who feels comfortable just opening it up, knowing we have an incredible audience online and here in the audience, you know, what's a roadblock that you personally are facing that you'd love help solving? I think, I think the, there are some key challenges as we lay out the foundation to connect these systems so that it's not necessary for someone to release a 10K. I mean, firstly, it shouldn't be. You know, this idea of 10K is, is kind of overwhelming anyways. And so ecosystems that allow for micro-creation, you know, just smaller, smaller kind of act or easier access into communities, ready-made communities. Community building is hard anyways. It's incredibly hard in NFTs. You know, you're seeing that with the amount of failure of, of projects. Those that don't have the ability to build a passionate community fast will often fail. And so the ability to have these ready-made communities that people can access and drop small amounts in and then grow them, that would be great. And then this, you know, as you start to connect them, as you connect the Fluff ecosystem with Mebits DAO and Board Ape and these things, and build out those across larger communities, it's going to be more people can get involved in creation. Um, I think there are two things that uh, um, I see as some of the most important things we need to focus on, and they're kind of the same thing. Uh, mass adoption is and should be everybody's uh, like primary goal in the space, and then also accessibility. And I think that those two things are one and the same, that uh, um, accessibility to the knowledge that you need to be able to interoperate with Web3 and crypto and NFTs, um, that's not something that's readily available to everybody. Um, you know, having enough ETH, even having 0.1 ETH to mint a project is, is out of reach for some people. And, uh, you know, this whole world merges finance, it merges tech, it merges art, and it merges community. And if we're really going to take community seriously, we need to strive to find ways to sort of flip those old models. Uh, one thing specific that our company is looking into and, and trying to break break the code or break the pattern and understand is uh, in most financial systems, like if you were to own stocks or if you'd own crypto or, you know, if you own a DAO uh, governance token, um, the whales or, or a, a small group of people can have the majority of control over the say of all of that. But I do believe, and our company believes, that there is some way to break that, whether um, through some different kind of reward in the system or some other element or mechanic that helps create a more level playing field. So I challenge everyone in the space to help try to find ways that make the space more equitable and more accessible to everyone so we can get the mass adoption we deserve. That's amazing. We've got it, we know, Aaron and I have often talked about, we've got it wrong right now, it's functional, that we have, you know, ten thousand dollar NFTs and a, you know, four thousand person com like core community with fluff. That's not what it needs to be. Mm -hmm. It needs to be millions of people in an ecosystem, co-creating. Um, absolute. This is the scariest thing, guys. If we continue with layered information, i.e., access to information based on spend, we're heading towards a truly dystopian future. That is. That's the biggest challenge we face as a society. And NFTs can either work towards breaking that, or unfortunately, they're the most powerful tool to, to emphasize that if, if they, they get into the wrong hands. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, I've, I've, it's, it is so cool having, you know, all of the large companies like you guys here to help in this battle for an open, inclusive metaverse that gives everyone free access to this technology. Wherever they're from, um, whatever their background and their socio, Demographic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It makes me think just on the artist level, and I see this a lot, where it's really hard for people to get into the space and they're afraid of the stigma around it. Like there's an artist, a couple who are here, they wanted to put out an NFT and then their fans are saying, you know, like it, it's bad for this reason or for this reason. Then others, actually the guy who cuts my hair, he, uh, he told me that he makes paintings. And I was like, well, do you know what an NFT was? This was like a month ago. So I came back and now he's made NFTs. And he's like, well, now what do I do? And explained to him, all right, well, you should, you know, follow some of these projects. You should get an NFT, join the Discord, start becoming a part of the community. So I think it's really important for us and everything we're doing here too. To, it's a weird thing to say, but like 
educate people so that they understand what that is yes. and what this is and that it's not like something to be afraid of, it's not a problem, it's not ruining the world, it is the future, it's building the future. And also I think it's on us too and we are all doing it to the best degree that we can. And I know with us even, with Angel, with Hume, with Fluff World, with everything that we're a part of, to welcome people in and give them opportunities to easily become a part of the communities. Because it's scary. You're just like a new artist and you're like, oh, I want to make a music NFT. I have zero Twitter followers. What do I do? Um, I think it's really important for us to say, well, like, come be a part of our community. Join this spaces. Hey, everybody, this is this person. They're new. Join this Discord. So educate and welcome. Yeah, and I think we see that every day in terms of the welcomeness of the community, the commitment to education, and to um, the note Jacob that uh, Jacob made on inclusion. You know, the more voices we bring into this conversation, no matter what perspective you're coming from, I think it's so important because as we build the future together, it's going to be critical that it be inclusive as possible, it be as open as possible. We're educating people because it's going to take many years to build the future that we desire, and I think yeah. the more we all get involved, um, the better it's going to be. Yeah. Keep the metaverse fucking open. There we yes. go. Yes, open. Yeah. All right, I want to end on a note of optimism, just knowing that, um, you know, we're building the future. We see it around us. Um, so many here are involved in it. Um, and I'm excited for what that is going to mean for those growing up where Web3 is what they grow up with. I see my young nephews, you know, every experience that they get excited about on the internet is a metaverse type experience, is going to be really foundational with Web3. So I'm curious, like, what impact it's going to have on those kids who are growing up with Web3, their interest in art, in music, in film, in creative pursuits. You know, what, it, what do you think the impact is going to be and what uh, does that mean for the future? Well, I'm just excited about they're going to grow up with this concept of digital ownership. And, um, you know, that this tech is going to keep maturing. And, you know, we saw, like, artists like Bruce Springsteen, for example, sell their whole catalogs. And then, you know, in, in the future, like, that could have been something generationally that was always in his family. Um, so that was kind of sad to see. And we'll see a future where, where um, people have more choices. Yeah. I talked about it a bit before, mm -hmm. but again, if there's any like 10 or 11, 12, 15 year olds here in this room or watching, that you will have other pathways and opportunities. Like especially coming back to music, you won't necessarily have to go sign a record deal where you're giving 87% of all the revenue away to the record label who then owns the music that you'll never get back. And then on the publishing side, giving away 50% of your publishing rights to a company that owns 50% of your publishing for the rest of time. That you're gonna have these new pathways where you can own what you're making and build a career for it and fund it and then go make the album you wanna make or the movie you wanna make or the TV show you wanna make. Um, and I also think, and this is something that really inspires us with the Metastar world, there are people who wanna be singers but don't wanna get on stage. You know, there are people who want to be animators, but want to be a part of a team and work on creating something with people that is like a living, breathing artist. You've never really been able to be like, uh, so Beyonce, like, can I be like you? <laughs> mm. um, it's really cool what we're seeing, and that's just one example of it. So yeah, you could do it different. I have a lot of hope for this future generation, and I think that, uh, um, I come into it from uh, an interesting perspective. Uh, I worked and toured for several years uh, onboarding uh, students into the creative arts and teaching film and teaching music and all of that and saw that transition into Web 2 kind of when uh, uh, being able to work on your own and not having to rent a studio, it, it democratized creativity to a big degree. And those students in that generation who were just born with an iPad in their hand, it's nothing for them to like get in a garage band and do this. Where that was a huge challenge that had so many gatekeepers and so many elitist circles and challenges. This shift into Web3 is a very large shift. And 
uh, kids these days are learning self-custody. They are learning finance. They are learning economics. They are learning tech and coding and the art, and they're learning how to push all of those things forward together. Uh, there's an artist who I wanted to call out, uh, Jefferson Cash, who's, uh, he's got a party bear, a friend of mine since well before the NFT thing. And uh, as an artist, I mean, he had been uh, raising money out of his pocket, uh, working uh, smaller jobs to create music videos. And he had been doing this for some time in the Web2 way, where he'd released it onto YouTube, he'd released the music onto Spotify. But now that he understands NFTs. He's learning game theory. He's, you know, he's separating and dissecting his animated uh, uh, music videos and making each one of them characters. And if you own a certain amount of those characters, you can get access to this. And if you own access to this, then you get certain drops and this and that. And in that process, he's also learning about uh, LLC and business formation, all the weird gray areas in this country about DAO formation, how to uh, properly democratize your stuff in a Web3 way. He's learning all the legalese around it. It's the amount of stuff stuff that people are having to learn just to interoperate for us and for older generations, it's a lot. It's a huge lift. But when the kids of, of this future generation come out the door screaming with all of this knowledge, they're going to be intimidatingly responsible. <laughs> it's going to be very, very cool. Very cool. Um, I'm going I'm to steal one for Aaron McDonald and try to replicate, uh, do a, a poor job. He's brilliant at um, explaining that with automation right now, um, our, our manual tasks are going to be gone. The traditional jobs we know, whether it's accountancy or legal work, it's going to be gone, and it unlocks our ability to be creative. This is about catalyzing that creativity. And so that ability for people to quit I, I drug receipts, my great friend Arlo Weisenberg just quit his job running an agency to build the art that he's always wanted to build, received incredibly well, and it's, it's unlocked. And so for that, that's the first thing is that it, this is coming. Most people will be able to unlock their creative side, that dream project, and using the power of Web3, bring that to life. It's really, really cool. The part that I'm most passionate about, that I'm so optimistic about, I worked for raising money for charities for seven years. It is back-breaking work. Um, evangelizing, getting the community engaged, coming up with some kind of content that inspires them to go through some kind of draconian process to try to get some money towards this thing that they're passionate about, and you've got like 15 seconds. Well, we're, we're showing that with Web3, you can mobilize a community in seconds and make that donation. And we saw that with um, our Auckland City Mission donation, a million dollars in 24 hours from seven people. Imagine what would happen if we, if we mobilize the entire ecosystem. Um, and then Ukraine, you know, a half a, just under a half a million dollars in 48 hours with a simple scene drop. Angel baby. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's just truly, thank you. Yes. Again, it's not us. Community plus content plus easy access to that commerce, and you wrap purpose around that, guys. And you know, DAOs that can help people identify projects, solve duplication. You know, in New Zealand, there are 14 major breast cancer charities that have the same bloody duplication, same CEOs and faxes, and pull them all together into a DAO, identify projects, identify content, funnel the money. It's like, it's next level. Mm. It's next level, and I think it's a great place to leave it. I love the future that you all are building. I'm so excited to see the innovation that you're bringing to the space, and thanks to you, I can't wait to see what's next. So I appreciate you. And thank you so much thank for you. coming yeah. and joining us. Great. You. You're in. One of us, one of us. <laughs> Done. I don't know how much time we have. I'm the time um, kind of keep, I, I'm coming, one of the, do we have time? We've got minutes 10 minutes? We've got 10 minutes for questions. I heard 30 that, minutes, Matt. That's awesome. Oh, 30 minutes, Matt, peace. We kind of just meander through, grab yourself a juice or whatever there is there. I think but, Angel Baby's Sorry, Shannon, play. back to you. Wait, um, Angel Baby's playing? I think in 10 minutes, oh. I believe. Is that right? No. Bullshit. Am I wrong? No, you're like, no, Jay. I think I'm right. <laughs> yes, I'm but, right. You all but get to see Angel. This, this is incredible, right? And it's going to be crazy all day. So back to you, boss. Let's see. Do we have time to take questions? Hi. Hey, uh, you know, your agents here, uh, baseball fan. And um, I thought there was something uh, you could talk about with the NFT Yeah.
Well, we, yeah, it's a really good question. So for those, because you weren't mic'd up, it's about, yes, there's all, all this, you know, we ended with this optimism, but there, is, there are bad players in every ecosystem. And in our current ecosystem where we're just finding our feet, those bad players can run roughshod over people that are just learning. I think every single one of us, your baptism in NFT is some kind of scam. Yeah, and people are like, I'll yep, you, it. good on you. You're now officially a member. Someone managed to scam you. <laughs> I bought like four fake <laughs> lobby lobsters. I got so excited about them. I was like, um, uh, that, that's going to be about developing a trust economy wrapped around this. And, you know, the trust economy was already starting to, to build. That's what content creators, quote unquote, influencers are. They are people that, where you start to develop a trust relationship so that you can, you know, take their word for things. They do a lot of the research and vetting for you. And that's definitely, listen, it's the biggest, I think it's the biggest challenge facing the industry. We were gonna have a um, trust and security in the metaverse, um, uh, discussion here, and we'll probably do one of those in AR now, I think, uh, probably tomorrow. Yes, sir. Sorry, I've taken over your panel. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please. Sorry. I, well, I think I really quickly, yes, to, to his point about the tax implications too, like, I welcome that. That's great. You know, like, I will hold an NFT for more than a year because if I sell it before, then it's a short-term capital gain. Um, it's like a new asset class, so of, of course we're going to pay taxes on it. And then the money I earn from staking, crypto, and all of that stuff, it's like that helps make the world go round. So yeah. everyone should be responsible and pay taxes. And we like track. hospitals and roads and yeah. things. <laughs> Two. Yes, sorry. Okay, so I have a quick question. Um, because I've been kind of inspired in thinking about like Angel Baby, and I know, um, you know, entertainment's a big thing. Uh, you have sports, uh, you have athletes. Um, with the ASM brains and like AFA and some of the altered state machines directions, do you guys see um, like metaverse athletes and you know just like you know it's like Angel Baby's a metaverse superstar, but like anyone can be a superstar. Like LeBron James is a superstar. Like, uh, what is y'all's thoughts on um, you know metaverse athletes in a way, kind of like that? It's almost the same. <laughs> I would say from my perspective and what we believe will happen with virtual people overall is you're going to have vir virtual superstars in all areas in the metaverse. So virtual athletes, I mean, once you can put a brain into an NFT and they're training all day long and they become unbelievable at their game, and now once we have more and more avatars and those avatars become like a superstar in a game that everyone's following, they're gonna become superstars as well. But I think it, you'll also have actors, like it's going to be our world in an alternate way. So uh, yeah, I think you're gonna see it everywhere, whether it's a writer, an actor, a poet, a, like I was thinking about this this morning because we have Brene Brown here who's like a very inspiring speaker I think you're going to have people like that that are not necessarily just a human having another version of themselves, but it is truly a virtual being, 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 being. I like what's being. happening here, buddy. <laughs> uh, wow, we're in it. We're in the middle of a so it has happened. We did it. We're in it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think you're going to have these new personalities that are fully virtual, and it's going to be very cool to see and be a part of. To compound on that a little bit too, I think that the idea of an anonymity being introduced to this allows a totally different range and spectrum of people to rise up. Uh, I hate to use this example, but Millie Vanilli as a Metastar might have worked because... <laughs> It, it's not based on, on all of the, the image and all of that. It's the talent behind that talent that's actually driving the popularity. Same thing could happen with sports players, and I think it would be a really interesting dynamic to see how that comes, especially in the metaverse games and all of that. But uh, I think that uh, um, it's, it's not always easy for most artists or even athletes to go and be in the public image. So the anonymity and the ability to have an avatar that represents you on any degree is probably going to help create a whole new wave of people that feel like coming into the light. You know, it'll probably affect like with ageism too. Like right. there are athletes who 
maybe they can't be a professional athlete anymore and now they're yeah. working on like a virtual version of you're themselves strategist you know, for the nfl yeah. and you're yeah. playing a football i mean yeah there you go yeah yeah, yeah. good I, question mark ward uh, to inspire you guys um, those of you that are here live uh, and have been waiting for the AFA game uh, they have filmed an AFA game in ar and it's at the asm dome you can sit there and watch it on a stadium AFA Stadium and watch the, these AFA characters playing against each other. And that's the start of, and you can see that one of them, you know, scores have got in the start of these, these stars, these AI stars. And like you say, I already have different avatars that I'm a fan of, because they're just awesome, right? Mm -hmm. So the journey has already begun, right? Yep. 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 All right, I think that maybe was our last question. We're getting the queue. Thanks so much, amazing questions, amazing panelists. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you so much, Anna. That was thank absolutely you. great thank job. You, thank, thank you guys so much. You guys want to see Angel Baby? Yeah. Yes. Is it going to happen? You want to learn about Angel yeah, Baby's journey? Yeah. yeah. Go it's going to happen? Right and now? we don't need them over there, right? No. Right after this, there's going to be another incredible conversation over at the ASM Dome in about 15, 10 minutes. So once this is done, make your way over to the ASM Dome. But you check watch this from out. over there. Holy hell in a handbasket. Here it Holy comes. Watch for the middle.